Good morning, everyone. It's Mike in for Jamie. It's Cycle to Work Day, and a very happy birthday to Meghan Markle, Billy Bob Thornton, and Barack Obama. Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss took a trip to Cardiff for the third leadership hustings on Wednesday, with the former Chancellor and the Foreign Secretary battling hard to gain the backing of Conservative members. Liz remains the favourite of the two and has now landed the backing of former Health Secretary Sajid Javid. But poor old Rishi looks like he's finishing third in a two-horse race, with Boris still the choice of the membership. Speaking to Sky News, YouGov's research director Patrick English said more than half of Tory members think it was the wrong decision to oust the Prime Minister. The Conservative Party membership aren't that enamoured with the choice in front of them and would probably rather Boris Johnson stay than those two, but of course that's not the choice in front of them. Ahead of the hustings, after calling Scotland's Nicola Sturgeon an attention seeker, Liz Truss turned her attention to Wales' First Minister. I believe Mark Drakeford has not delivered for the people of Wales and I will be holding him to account. The first visit to Taiwan by a high-ranking US politician in 25 years has angered China, who condemned it as a threat to peace and stability. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi addressed Taiwan's parliament and pledged American support for the island, which Beijing insists is part of China. Some people are happy about her dropping by, though, including Taiwanese official Wu Kaixi. I think Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan is the beginning of a process of writing a long-run wrong China policy. Taiwan says China's subsequent military exercises, which infringed on its territory, amount to a blockade. But others, like former diplomat Victor Gao, thinks they were justified. China has given repeated warnings before her visit against her visit, and she disregarded the Chinese warnings, she disregarded the President Biden's counsel as well as Pentagon's counsel. And what would happen if things escalated and there was an invasion of Taiwan? China expert Rana Mitter told Times Radio it would be huge hugely damaging. Both sides would certainly suffer, and I think we'd be talking about a contribution to a global recession if that happened. Three Britons captured by Russia are to be put on trial in a proxy court on charges of fighting in Ukraine as mercenaries. John Harding, Dylan Healy and Andrew Hill will be tried in the disputed Donetsk People's Republic, according to Russian media. Former British Army Colonel Simon Diggins says the trio had been working for the Ukrainian government. This is just what they call lawfare. In other words, the misuse of international law in order to try and put pressure onto people. The same court recently sentenced two British men to death. Meanwhile, there's been more speculation surrounding Vladimir Putin's health after the 69-year-old was seen limping again. Journalist John Sweeney met the Russian president after the MH17 Malaysia Airlines flight was shot down in 2014 and was surprised by the latest footage. Now he looks like a hamster, his cheeks stuffed with straw. And separately, a cancer doctor is following Putin all the time, all the time when he moves. So the evidence points to something wrong and this is Also what the Ukrainian intelligence is telling people, cancer of the blood in some form. Voters in the state of Kansas have decided to protect abortion rights after the landmark Roe v. Wade Supreme Court decision was overturned in June. They rejected a measure which would have allowed the tightening of restrictions or a total ban on the practice. Many states have outlawed abortion since the Supreme Court decision. Ashley All is an abortion rights supporter. What was at stake was our constitutional rights and our freedom. And so, um, you know, a coalition of voters across the political spectrum came together today and voted no. But Joe Biden signed an executive order on Wednesday night paving the way for Medicaid to pay for abortion services for people having to go out of state. Vice President Kamala Harris also announced new efforts to protect access to abortion, saying the Biden administration trusted the women of America to make their own decisions. Understanding that every day in America, especially with these extremist so-called leaders in states passing these laws, some of which will criminalize health care providers and plan- punish women, that we do everything in our power, in our ability, based on our role to ensure that we protect the women of America. Still to come on the Smart 7, Twitter weighs in on the Oscar Piastri Alpine F1 drama and Neil Gaiman's The Sandman is finally ready to binge on Netflix. Right after this. Welcome back.
It's officially Formula One's transfer silly season and the Alpine team were left red-faced after reserve driver Oscar Piastri denied he'd signed a deal to race for them in 2023, just an hour after they had announced he had. Twitter's been having fun with this one. Fellow driver Alex Albon copied his tweet to announce he was staying with Williams next season and Taunton Town Football Club joked the Aussie would be joining them instead. Driver and racing analyst Paul DeResta says it's all very odd. I find it very surprising that you're rejecting a, a team that's in kind of the top four and on a great upward projection that you wouldn't want to drive for them. That could only mean that he's got another seat secured somewhere else. The long-anticipated adaptation of fantasy horror The Sandman will be out soon on Netflix, with Tom Sturridge starring as Morpheus. After starting life as a comic in the 1980s, the original series ran until 1996, followed by a bunch of sequels and spin-offs. The series debuts on Friday, but creator Neil Gaiman says there's plenty more to come. What's lovely about Sandman is we've taken the first two volumes, basically. Uh, The first two books are the first ten episodes. There were 3,000 pages of Sandman man all together and we have told the first 400 pages Uh, so we have we have a way to go Rebecca Vardy's first interview since her Wagatha Christie libel case against Colleen Rooney aired on Talk TV on Wednesday and saw the famous footballer's wife deny she ever leaked any stories to the press despite a court of law saying otherwise. Interviewed by Kate McCann, Vardy discussed how all celebrities regularly set up photos and that she would continue to do so. She discussed what she thought of the trial judge as well as the final outcome and didn't rule out an appeal. She said she's still in touch with former agent Caroline Watt who withdrew from the case for mental health reasons Reasons. McCann asked if she thinks what feels bad about leaking stories to the sun. It's not a conversation that I'd want to talk about with her just purely because of her mental well-being and you know how how it's affected her as well. So you don't feel let down by her. Oh, come on. Oh, this has been the Smart Seven. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Daft Dog.